students, this video is intended for senior high school students of the work immersion here in Finma St. Jude College. This video will tackle about sessions 4 and 5. A few reminders before you start watching the video lecture. Number one, please do take down notes. Listen attentively, avoid unnecessary destruction, and of course, give extra attention to info marked with a star because it may be a recall question in the board exam. So, session 4 will be about medtech curriculum. So, basically, ano ba yung mga subjects na ititake nyo during college if ever that you will pursue medical technology. So, ito po yun. Here are our learning objectives for today. Okay, so as mentioned before, na discuss na natin what is the definition of medical laboratory science. So, basically, uh, this field uh, focuses on biology again and chemistry. This is a bachelor's degree that you can take up in college. And then after graduating and you have your license, you can work uh, mostly or primarily in hospital laboratories and clinics. And we are, yan, nandito tayo sa prevention, treatment, and diagnosis of infections and diseases. So we are the ones who aid the doctors to uh, help them made up a diagnosis for a specific patient. So, the Bachelor of Science in Medical Laboratory Science or Medical Technology, this is a four-year course. This is a degree pro program wherein the student attend classroom courses for three years and does a clinical rotation for one year. So, basically, yung fourth year nyo, um, the whole duration nyo, yung isang buong taon ng pagka-fourth year nyo here in college is actually the internship proper. This is based on CHED CMO-13 series of 2017. This four-year degree program belongs to the allied health profession. Okay, so the pictures that you are seeing here right now, here are the possible topics that you can take up during the first year. So, kung mapapansin dito, nandito pa yung mga English, tapos this is anatomy, ayan, mga simple chemistry, PE, ayan, so kung kayo, meron kayong PE during senior high school, so in first year college, meron pa rin po yan so basically, pag sinabi natin first year, these are just the minor subjects magkakaroon lang nung somehow mga major, however, yung mga majors na yon is still very easy pa so, ito ang uh, course na tinitake up nyo right now, PMLS, this is actually one of the subjects that you can take up during your first year in college and then second year, ayan so, si second year, medyo mahirap-hirap na siya. So, as you can see here, meron dito, this is something to do with cytogenetics. So, sa genetics natin, genetic makeup, as well as molecular biology, and mga laboratory propers na. But still, in during the second year, mga pahapyaw pa lang na laboratories po ito. And still, although medyo mas mahirap-hirap na yung subjects, meron pa ting mga minors dito, such as history, mga rizal, mga ganon. So, those are the possible subjects in second year. During the third year, ito na yung madugo. So, lahat na nakikita nyo dyan right now, pinag-aaralan po yan during third year, nandito na yung mga major subjects na tinatawag. So, good example of that is this one. This is under parasitology, wherein we will identify different parasites under the microscope and we will understand the basic principles behind them and basic informations. Then, this one naman, this is, I think, a picture of urine under the microscope. So, mga medtechs din po are able to identify the following, yan, mga dumi-dumi na yan, but hindi po yan dumi, mga structures po yan that can be found under the urine. And this may aid the doctor to come up with a diagnosis for a patient. And then, this one naman, this is under blood banking. So, blood transfusion, mga ganon, kailangan yung salina ng dugo. Si MedTech po muna yung magtatest niyan to check for compatibility. This one naman, I think, will be under clinical chemistry or hematology. We can check for the different analytes of our blood and measure them. Then, this is under histopathology. So, pwede dito, we will aid the doctor in diagnosing specific diseases that can be related to your tissues or your cells. And of course, yung laboratory proper, and this one is under microbiology, mga nagpapatubo ng bacteria, so that we can identify them as well. <coughs> so,
So, during fourth year naman, during fourth year, this is the one-year clinical internship training. So, during this, magkakaroon kayo ng rotation inside hospital laboratories, mga tertiary, yung mga malalaking hospital, padadala po kayo doon so that you can get a proper training. So, kung baga, bago kayo graduate, of course, dapat meron na kayong experience. Kasi, uh, in medical technology, it's not enough po na marunong lang theoretical, like ma mabilis magkabisado, mabilis makaintindi. However, yung mga medtechs din, of course, is dapat po marunong sa mga rotations in the, inside the laboratory. So, paano yung ginagawa? Mga techniques and principles on how to deal with different kinds of testing in the laboratory. So, yun yung isa sa ginagawa here in the one-year clinical internship training. So, this slide is the summary po ng mga different subjects that you can take up during the different years. Ayan. This can vary, no, depending on the school. But definitely, ito yung parang pinaka-basic na outline ng mga subjects na pwede nyong itake. So, pabasa na lang. And of course, don't forget RA-5527, the Philippine Medical Technology Act of 1969. Di ba binigyan ko na kayo ng way dyan para makabisado nyo kung kailan yung date of approval niya. And then again, that is June 21, 1969. Percentage of subjects in the board exam. So, in the board exam, you can, you will take up six subjects. But each subject po, meron pong iba-ibang subject yan under. Kung baga, parang ganun. So, hindi lang siya basta six, ganun. As in, marami siya tapos na enclose lang sa isang subject. And then, but still, each subject po comprises of 100 items each. So, you will take this up in two days. So, tig-tatlo sa isang araw. So, unang araw is clinical chem, micropara, clinical microscopy. And then, yung second day is HEMA, ISBB, and histopat, medtech loss, and bioethics. At ito po yung mga relative weights nila. So, yung mga nakakulay pula, si clean chem, micropara, hematology, immuno, sero, blood bank, those are the major subjects which is 20% yung kanyang weight. While well, the clinical microscopy as well as the histopath, medtech loss, and bioethics are 10% each po sila. <coughs> Excuse me. Board exam rating. So, for example, nag-take up ka na ng board exam. So, we will try to know if you pass or fail. So, sa board exam din, merong mga tinatanong na ganito like, magbibigay ng specific score tapos we will identify if passed or failed si student. So, dapat as in medtech, alam natin yung criteria. So, una, example, clinical chemistry major subject, diba, 20, micro para is 20, CM is again 10%, HEMA 20, ISBB is 20, histopath, MTLB, 10%. So, example, in each subject, ito daw po yung nakuha nyo. So, sa so, kunwari sa CC, naka 74 ka, micro para 76, CM 80, HEMA 77, ISBB 75. And then, histopath is 81%. And then, the next thing that we should do, kapag nakuha nyo na yung raw percentage, we can convert it in the relative weight, which is a good example. The ba, clinical chem is 20% of the whole board exam. So, since naka 74 ka doon, ang kukunin mo ngayon is the 74% of 20, and that is 14.8. Okay? Next, micro para, 76. So, 76% of 20 is 15.2. Then, CM, 80%. Since 10% lang siya ng whole board exam, 8 yun. Hematology, 77% of 20 is 15.4. ISBB, 75 ka kunwari. That is, relative weight niyan is 15. Then, histopath, MTLB, naka 81 ka, for example. And then, ang katumbas nun is 8.1. Ngayon, the next thing that you should do is you should add the relative weights na computed natin. Like 14.8, 15.2, 8, 15.4, plus 15, plus 8.1. Sige.
Okay, so I have added this relative weights, 14.8 plus 15.2. Plus 8, plus 15.4, plus 15, plus 8.1. The total of that is 76.5%. That is the general average of all of the subject. So, how do we know if this person passed the board exam? Again, number 1, check the average. It should be at least 75%. And in this case, nung kinompute nga natin, that is 76.5. Again, ulitin ko, check the average first. It should be at least 75%. So, since 76.5 itong student na ito, yung total niya, of course, this means that this student passed the first criteria. Next, no rating below 50% in any major subject. So, again, ang mga major subjects natin, CC, Micropara, HEMA, ISBB. So, lahat naman yan is above 50. Di ba? Kasi ito, 74, 76, 77, and 75. So, this student passed the second criteria. Okay, next. Third, the student has not failed in at least 60% of the subjects computed according to, to their relative weights. So, dapat daw, in any major subject or in all of the subjects, dapat wala dun sa 60% ang naka-75 ka and below. In this case, since si student dito, the CC, ito yung isang major, 74 yan, so that is failed. Then, Micropara, 76, pass. Hematology, CM is 80. Then, Hema, 77. ISBB, 75. Histopat, MPL is 81. So, in this case, ito lang naman. Um, Na-fail ni student so far. Kasi below 75, that is 20% only. So, definitely, the student have passed the third criteria po. So, with this, this is our given. Again, Check the average. It should be at least 75%. Check tayo dito. No rating below 50% in any major subject. So, check nyo yung CC, micro, para, HEMA, ISBB. So, wala namang below 50. And then, third one has not failed in at least 60% of the subjects computed according to their relative weights. So, tingin kayo dito kung sa may below 75. In this case, CC lang naman. That is 74 that is only 20%. So, hindi naman 60% ang bagsak niya or below 75. So, the third one or the third grade year has been met. Definitely, this student have passed the board exam. So, ayan na. So, once you pass the board exam, you will have your PRC license course now. Okay, moving on to course description. So, ito po yung mga basic subjects that you will take up. Like, ano ba talaga pinag-aaralan, ma'am, sa mga subjects na yan? So, una, we have histo, histology and histopathology. Both of these are different subjects. You can take this up in a different semesters po sila. So, pwede sa first semester, histology. And then, the other one is histopathology. Ang um, major differences nila is, kapag sinabi kasi natin histology, histo coming from the word tissue, yun po ibig sabihin ni histo eh, tissue. So, study of tissues and structures only. So, kumbaga, under histology, pinag-aaralan natin is yung mga normal structure. However, when it comes to histopathology, patho meaning diseases, ito po yung term na patho, it means diseases. So, pag pinagsama-sama, histopathology, this is a subject where in the diagnosis and study of diseases of the tissues and it involves examining tissues and or cells under the microscope. So, in general lang naman or in summary, pag histopathology ang pinag-aaralan, ito yung merong mga abnormalities or merong mga sakit na tissues. While the histology is yung the normal structures only and functions. Okay, so yan po ang differences ng histology at histopathology. And then again, si histopathology is part of the board exam. Okay. Next subject here, we have bacteriology. Bacteriology comes from the word bacteria. So, pag pinagsama bacteriology, this is the study of bacteria. Okay, so here in this subject, we will identify the medically important bacteria. So, in the whole world po kasi maraming klaseng bacteria, okay? Ang pinag-aaralan under bacteriology, specifically here in the Philippines, is yung mga medically important or yung mga bacteria na nagkukos po or possible mag-cause ng sakit. Okay, and then also, 
We have mycology and virology. Mycology is the study of fungal agents. And yung virology po is viral agents such as COVID-19. So, si COVID-19 po, pinag-aaralan po yan. Mga medtechs din natin. So, any type of virus, bacteria, parasites, dito po yan. And then, parasitology, coming from the word parasite, this is the study of parasitic infection and infestation. So, yung mga uod, mga bulate, ayan, nasa parasitology po yan. Okay, another subject that you need to take up in college here in MedTech is, of course, the research. So, hindi kayo makakagraduate ng college nang wala kayong research. So, meron po yan dalawang SEM. So, research 1 at research 2. But, iisa lang naman yung topic na kailangan yung tapusin within the research 1 and research 2. Kung baga yung research 2, continuation siya. And also, principles and strategies of teaching in health education. So, meron din po tayo ditong subject na ino-offer. Meron din yan dito sa St. Jude na nagtuturo kung paano magturo or maging teacher kapag kayo po ay gusto nyo katulad ni ma maging professor po kayo ng medtech or any health education in general. So, pinag-uusapan po yan under PISTE, Principles and Strategies of Teaching in Health Education. And also, meron din kaming subject or tayong subject na community and public health. Dito naman pinag-uusapan yung concerns ng diseases when it comes to the whole community itself. Okay? So, pwede dyan uh, during normal face-to-face -face classes kapag CPH ang subject, pinapadala namin yung mga students sa mga barangays. Tapos, mag-conduct kami doon ng parang health survey, mga ganun po ang under CPH. And also, we have here basic pharmacology. So, pharmacology, it's, it has something to do with diseases or, I'm sorry, ng drugs. I'm sorry, ulitin ko. Basic pharmacology concerns about drugs. Okay? Drugs as in gamot. Okay? Kasi meron pong mga medtech ang uh, gumagawa ng testing when it comes to drugs such as shabu, marijuana. Yung mga nagde-detect po nun sa ihi, baka kayo po nakapag-perform na kayo ng drug testing before, di ba, kukulektahan kayo ng ihi niyan. Tapos yung magte-test nun for the presence of shabu, marijuana, or any illegal drugs is si MedTech po. That's why it is vital na meron tayong idea. Although ang basic pharmacology natin, it's not as in-depth sa mga pharmacists. Okay? Yung mga pharmacy students, sobrang pinag-aaralan nila lahat yan. But tayo po, basic knowledge lang is enough kasi hindi naman tayo yung nagde-dispense ng drug. Ang mahalaga lang is meron tayong idea sa kung ano yung mga components niya as well as paano natin siya itetest in the laboratory. Also, we have cytogenetics. Cytogenetics, it has something to do with your DNA. So, yung mga genetics nga, yung mga study of heredity, ayan, mga chromosomes. Ayan po. Sa cytogenetics po yan, pinag-aaralan. Then, going back to laboratory management. Laboratory management deals with the basic principles of management theory and practices as well as human resource management and communication. So, once you graduate medical technology kasi, although ang pinaka-primarily na pwede nyo talagang puntahan is yung hospital or clinical laboratories natin, aside from being a medtech, you can actually uh, mag-establish ng sarili mong laboratory. Like, gusto mo maging businessman or woman at gusto mo magtayo ng laboratory. So, dapat pinag-aaralan din yan under laboratory management. Next is serology and immunology. This gives emphasis in understanding the nature of antigen and antibody including its structures and types. So, yung mga testing po, Katulad ng COVID-19 antigen testing, this is being studied under immunos at cicero. Okay. Yung test kits na yan, kaya kami, we do not advise uh, untrained professionals to perform their own COVID-19 antigen testing is because hindi po nila naiintindihan or hindi familiar to sa principles ng test kits. Kasi po sa serology and immuno, pinag-aaralan po yan. Okay. So, yung mga interferences niya, bakit minsan nagkakaroon ng false positive, false negative results, pinag-aaralan po yan under zero in immuno. Next, we have immunohematology or blood banking. This is something to do with naman with your blood types as well as blood transfusion to check if compatible yung blood na ibibigay sa iyo o sa pasyente. 
Then, hematology naman, meron tayong dalawa dyan, hema 1 and 2. This course focuses on the hemopoiesis and the formed elements of the blood under normal and abnormal conditions. So, yung mga red blood cell, white blood cell, platelets, yung functions nila at ano yung possible diseases na pwede kang magkaroon sa mga components na yon is being studied under hematology. Clinical chemistry focuses on analytes such as electrolytes, glucose, uric acid, crea, serum, proteins, bilirubin, and enzymes. This, the, this analytes can actually be found in your blood and this can indicate specific diseases. A good example of that is yung ating blood glucose level or blood sugar. So, kung mataas, kunwari, for example, ang yung blood sugar, that can indicate that you are experiencing hyperglycemia or it can possibly diagnose you with diabetes. So, tayo yung magtetest ng mga analytes na yan to check if si pasyente ba ay merong ganitong sakit or we can relay the information from the laboratory test to the doctor so that they can interpret the results. Next is analysis of urine and other body fluids or under clinical microscopy. Ito naman mainly focuses on the testing of urine. Kaya nga siya analysis of urine. But also other body fluids is being studied here such as your cerebrospinal fluid and any other fluid apart from your blood. Kasi si blood nga ay pinag-aaralan under HEMA. Okay? So... Yung other body fluids natin, such as cerebrospinal fluid, synovial fluid, pinag-aaralan po yan under AUBF or clinical microscopy.